Hello and welcome to our channel, the Ministry of the Real Truth. Today we are bringing you something unusual, extraordinary, and it's titled A Bible Before the Bible. This is uh, posted up online around about March 2021. A Bible Before the Bible. In 1883, a strange manuscript was dismissed as a forgery. Now scholars say it was real. The world of Bible scholarship is a buzz, or was a buzz, at that time with a remarkable announcement. Had a 137-year-old mystery been solved? There was a nagging problem of an apparently ancient scroll that surfaced in 1883. In a scene full of religious anxiety, it was declared a forgery and lost. This is a copy of the 1883 Shapira scrolls. The scroll was presented by a man named Moses Shapira, a noted dealer of antiquities in Jerusalem. He had a good reputation, though he had gotten involved in one case of a forgery, the famous Moabite idols. There was no suggestion. Shapira knew they were fake. His story of how the scroll was found was a little odd. Some Bedouin men in the area around the Dead Sea, he said, had found it in a cave. Sounds very familiar, doesn't it? About the Dead Sea Scrolls, etc., found in a similar way. Then a thief stole it on Shapira's behalf, dropped it off and disappeared, leaving no record of the place of discovery. The scroll did seem very ancient. On the blackened surface could faintly be seen letters in Paleo-Hebrew. The scroll told the familiar story of Moses telling the Israelites how to enter the Promised Land, but details shifted oddly from the usual book of Deuteronomy. This Moses lists the Ten Commandments, except they're spoken by God in the first person, instead of the third. Among many changes in wording, there was a new commandment, Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. And each commandment is followed by a new phrase, I am God thy God. Shapira had offers to buy it, but went for broke. He took it to the British Museum, an institution at the heart of colonial Christianity, and asked for a million pounds. There was huge public interest. Crowds lined up to see the fragments at the British Museum. The Prime Minister at that time, William Ewart Gladstone, or Ewart Gladstone, himself stopped by for an inspection open to the authentication. The great poet, Robert Browning, was entranced by the manuscript and thinks it's real, I hope, he writes. But for Christians, this was a three-alarm fire. The Bible was widely seen as a fixed and perfect text, Indeed, for many that was a key proof of Christianity. The Bible was seen as a canon, the text preserved letter by letter by the Church. Is this talking about the Roman Catholic Church? With the Shapira manuscript suggesting this story had problems, there was trouble. It was a problem for scholars as well, who were seeing what they didn't understand and didn't expect. That usually means it's wrong. As a scholar, Frederick G. Kenyon reflects in 1897. In these strips of leather, there was enough to cast doubt upon the whole of the received text of the Old Testament and to discredit the whole science of textual criticism. Then Charles Clermont Gonneau shows up. He was a showboating French scholar who made a reputation for himself as a debunker of forged antiquities. There were lots of those, but Clermont Gonneau's reputation was in retrospect, undeserved. He had made mistakes, like declaring the Osorkon bust, a statue of an Egyptian pharaoh, to be a forgery. On Clermont Gano's advice, the Louvre in Paris, the Louvre Museum, sold it. Arriving at the British Museum, he was refused a private examination of the manuscript. The in-house scholar was making a detailed study of the Shapira manuscript. They weren't eager to have the French celebrity make, make it a rapid public announcement. So Clermont Gonneau waited in line with the general public to see the manuscript. The exhibit, he reports, was very ill-lighted and difficult to approach, owing to the crowd of the curious. But still, he sees very clearly. The fragments are the work of a modern forger. The leather was obviously cut, he declares, from a copy of the Torah as kept in Jewish synagogues. He insinuates that Shapira himself had been the forger. He got pushed back at the time. 
An unnamed writer for London's Daily News had a very observant critique of Clermont Ganot's evaluation and a valuable description of the Shapiro manuscript. It could not be written on a Torah, Torah scroll. It could not be written on a Torah scroll. He notes, since it was clearly written on leather of a thicker character, differing very considerably from that usually employed in synagogue roles. This writer notes that the story Shapira had told of where the manuscript had come from was odd, but not impossible, and it would be desirable in a matter of so matter of so great importance that some inquiry should be made. It was lost in the whirlwind. The Philadelphia Times reports the Shapiro manuscripts are pronounced by M. Clermont Gano to be fraudulent. This decision by so eminent an authority has produced a sensation and has caused all sorts of critical comment. There's Moses Shapiro on the left, the British Museum vintage postcard, it's a vintage postcard, and Charles Clermont Gano on the right. Christians were sure the fragments were fake. Clermont Gano, Clermont Gano, who seems to have been Orthodox Christian, had gotten the faith back on track, or at least he'd told them what they wanted to hear. English and American media leaped to the attack, picking apart every detail of every detail of Shapiro's story. He had gotten the manuscript from Bedouin wandering Arabs, shepherds. That just meant low characters, evidently. The Oriental races, when once embarked on a career of crime, stick at nothing, notes the London News. There was a hazy anti-Semitism around much of the commentary. Shapiro was said to have converted to Christianity, but not to good works, as an English historian noted. As the Chicago Tribune reports, Mr. Shapiro unfortunately failed not only to support the genuineness of his manuscript, but also to show that he became possessed of it in circumstances affording, to, affording a reasonable presumption of good faith. Shapira took it all rather poorly. He had a very bad attack of brain fever, as the Liverpool Mercury reports. Shapira left for Europe in March 1884 in Rotterdam, Holland. Shapira checks into a seedy hotel. The details are reported a week later. He had not left his room for several days. The police forced the door and found the blood bespattered corpse upon the bed. The forger had shot himself. Well, the forger had shot himself. The media celebrated. <laughs> they celebrated. A writer at the Leeds Mercury explains, It is impossible to resist the conclusion that something like poetic justice has befallen the man who was the leading actor in the daring but unsuccessful crime. Christians celebrated too. They got on board as well. In America, Robert Jones Burdett, a Baptist pastor with a national platform, writes a widely reprinted column that sermonizes on the Shapiro matter. There was a complete Bible centuries before Shapiro happened, and there will be the same Bible ages after Shapiro and his patent Deuteronomy have together crumbled into the indistinguishable dust. Around 1949, the Dead Sea Scrolls surfaced. It all felt a bit similar. Ancient scrolls on leather found in caves near the Dead Sea by Bedouins or shepherds or wandering Arabs. Yes, that's the thought at the beginning, it sounded familiar. Scholars remembered the Shapiro matter and there was a lurky feeling their profession might have lost, gotten it wrong. Had they allowed an utterly unique biblical manuscript to be lost, it was unthinkable. Christian scholars kept the matter under control. As atheist scholar John Allegro, better known for his seemingly bizarre theories about the Bible, had championed the Shapiro case in the popular media. To look back on it, all is to wonder if the reasonable, respectable, traditional scholars all got it wrong. The poets and weirdos had known. Year after year, the Shapiro matter wouldn't die like Christianity would have liked. The commentary in favour of re-evaluating it was often starkly Jewish. I'm not sure if this is the writer of this uh, on his website or somebody else. Uh, possibly somebody else. The commentary in favour of re-evaluating it was often starkly Jewish. 
is unaware of any Christian writer to have championed the Shapira case. In 2014, the journalist Yoram Sabo had a documentary, Shapira and I. In 2017, the scholar Shlomo Guil had a scholarly paper. The Shapira scroll was an authentic Dead Sea scroll. A well-reviewed 2016 book, The Lost Book of Moses by Chinan Tige, however, said the manuscript was a fake and Shapira the forger. His evidence? He'd found an old synagogue Torah that had been in Shapira's possession. To gain notice, some sections of the leather were cut off. It was all lies, he realises. As to why Shapira would fabricate fragments of the fragments that were so different, he suggests that scholars would be unlikely to dismiss them as fakes precisely because they were so quirky. The scholar, Idan Dershowitz, was researching a sh- was researching Shapira while still a graduate student. In a just released study of the Shapira manuscript, probably prior to 2021 or 2021, he notes that many of the claims used to invalidate them actually do the opposite. He notes that many have dismissed the case for authenticity based on the drawings which the British Museum scholar had made. But these were quite different from several copies that artists had made for the media. Scholars tend to repeat patterns often unconsciously. The artist's copies, do show what suggests, give a clearer image of what the manuscript actually looked like, or had really looked like. Dershowitz, Dershowitz addressed the cut Torah scrolls that Chanan Tige found, noting they had water damage. The pages were likely cut to remove rotting leather. Dershowitz went to look through Shapira's papers, left an archive and never consulted in 137 years. He found Shapira's notes in trying to transcribe the scroll. There were pages full of question marks, marginal comments and rejected readings. Clearly, Shapira was trying to read a text which was no, unknown to him. Dershowitz presses on from basic authentication of the manuscript to an even deeper question. Why was the manuscript so strange? The idea occurs to him, it can't be a text that is inspired by Deuteronomy or based on Deuteronomy, or the book of Deuteronomy, but actually the other way around. This Deuteronomy might have preceded, come before, the usual text, he suggests. Later, some laws and poems were added, and that became the Bible. For all its claims, Christian traditions, for all its claims, Christian tradition knows very little about the Bible's origins. Who wrote it? When? These matters are unclear, as even Christian scholars might admit. What is more clear is that Christian tradition has a habit of destroying variant Bible manuscripts and the people who present them to the public. How else would you get an inerrant Bible? Think on that one. Here is Tshovitz's translation of the Shapira manuscript, and his book is available for free. Okay. Well, um, cover that in part two of this and give you the link to download it if you'd like to have a read of that okay, we are the Ministry of the Real Truth and we hope that you enjoyed this short video and that this sort of thing went on blows your mind and if you really like this video subscribe to our channel give us a like, add your comments in the comment section and we'll get back to them as soon as we can. And then go share this video with all your religious friends, whatever the, uh, belief they're under, be it uh, Judaism, Christianity, or Islam, or other. And then tell them about us, the Ministry of the Real Truth, who brought it to you. And look for us in part two, where we cover... Do Shavit's translation of the Superior Manuscript, and we'll leave a link below that. You can probably go to this website, we'll leave the link to that website and download it yourself and read it in your own time. Okay. Until then, have a great day, or great night, great evening, stay safe. Um, if you're of the faith, stand in the faith, be strong.